All right, everybody, uh, here's your online biology lecture. So we're going to try and get through these two PowerPoints here pretty quickly. So I'm just going to get rolling. Um, but you have the PowerPoints, so you can always go back and look through them uh, as you go along. And then there will be stoppages uh, on the video as well to kind of check your understanding. Um, so bell ringer, um, weekly prayer. Um, but here's the first thing I want you to do is kind of check out this video. So you can go ahead and um, do that now. Um, or do it at the end, but this is a good kind of recap of summary of kind of last week um, since we haven't seen each other in a while. Um, so it's entitled, What is the Theory of Evolution? It's its own assignment on Canvas. So you can like pause this one and go knock out that one. But as we're moving on, this part two here, uh, Evidence of Evolution, is geographic, transition fossils, and comparative anatomy. So some kind of fun things to talk about. So let's get rolling into it. So as far as geographic evidence, right, geography, what what do species evolve in response to? Well, we've been talking about natural selection, right? So it's like, you know, nature selecting for certain traits. So a change in environment is what's going to cause species to change. If the environment doesn't change, they're just going to all stay the same. Um, so if we've got two environments that are geographically separated but have very similar climates and soil, then we're going to expect to find very similar organisms in those separate environments. So think like South America and Africa, right? Separated by the ocean, but certain areas have very similar environments. So do those environments have similar creatures? Will they be exactly the same? No, but they should have some similar traits, which might kind of lead us to believe, okay, evolution, there might be something to this natural selection. So there we go. If we look around, ooh, armadillo, anteaters, pangolins, anteaters, here's, are they the same? Definitely not. But what they do is fulfill the kind of same niche in each of these habitats. Uh, and actually, like DNA-wise, they actually do share a lot of DNA with each other. Um, so they're like little grub, ground eaters, um, bigger things were predated, predated uh, upon them. So they'd have that kind of similar niche in the food web. Um, so that's kind of just evidence. Okay, similar areas. We get similar looking organisms. Another big one that's kind of cool to look at is camels. Um, so if we look, you know, we've got one humpers, two humpers. Well, actually the origin of camels that we found based on fossils of actually in North America, even though we don't have any living camels in like the U.S. today, we actually like did back in the day, which is kind of fascinating and they spread around. And then llamas actually share a lot of DNA with them and geographically in, in that dry, arid area, they kind of fulfill the same role that camels do uh, in these other environments that are out here. So kind of cool to think about. So there's a little fun fact of the day. You know, we did have camels in the U.S. Um, now, if we kind of keep looking at fossils, if you're looking at this one, kind of what do you observe, right? This is a um, kind of human-like looking fossil, um, or maybe it's ape-like. Maybe I'm trying to trick you, right? Um, could you tell its look of motion? How does it move? Can you tell its species? Maybe, maybe not. So that's kind of the field of comparative anatomy that we're going to start talking about here is kind of comparing fossil structures, fossils, bones, to like modern day organisms or like other fossils that might be similar. So this is actually one of the most famous fossils in the world. It's Lucy. Uh, uh, that's what the uh, researchers named her. Uh, her species is Australopithecus afarins, uh, um, which afar is the region in Ethiopia where they found it. Um, so 3.2 million years old. Homo sapiens, we think, are only about 200,000 years old. So this is a pretty old hominid. So that word hominid means human-like. Um, so not a human, but human-like because it had human features, but also apes features. So like the ape parts were kind of the skull, the really longer arms, but the human feature that was fascinating was this bipedal, the knee joints, how they articulate with each other. They work kind of just like ours, which was fascinating. And uh, when you watch the video coming up, you'll see uh, how we think this creature actually walked. And it would have been uh, primarily like bipedal, primarily moving on two legs. Um, so yes, like a chimpanzee can move on two legs, right? Or a gorilla will get up on its two legs, two legs, but primarily they kind of use all four to like kind of like shh, ramble around. Um, so this is definitely different. So check out this uh, video uh, coming up here. Uh, oh yeah, she was named after Lucy, uh, the Beatles song, Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. So there you go, LSD. So guess what the Beatles were into. Um, but yeah, here's the video. So check this out and then come back and we'll keep rolling with it. All right, what I do want to point out here though is 
these uh, diagrams, you've probably seen them before, like a chimp kind of evolving into man, homo sapiens. This is given like evolution, it's a really bad rap, because this is not how it works, and it's not really what they intended to show, um, but it's kind of been taken out of context, and you know, it's just not a great diagram. So it's showing evolution as linear, that oh, we came from apes, or apes or chimps, and that's just not what happened. It should be like a branching diagram. It should look more like this. So we've got kind of chimpanzees back here. They're way older than hominids. Chimpanzees and apes have been around a long time, much longer than us. Um, but we found other fossils out there, not just Lucy, but other hominid species around the world. And we'll talk more about these other ones in a different lecture. Um, but this is what it should look like. See this kind of branching, right? So Neanderthals and humans, we might have came from this kind of Homo erectus uh, hominid. And this is um, kind of the, one of the first uh, people that make tools and stuff like that. And I use the term people, I guess I should say hominid. Um, Neanderthals, pretty close to us. We actually interbred with Neanderthals and we probably interbred with Homo erectus. Um, but they went extinct, they went extinct, but in our genes, we can still find those genes, which is fascinating. So yeah, it should be more branching and then like chimps, you know, they should branch out this way because they're still, you know, modern day and around today. So it's kind of fascinating. You know, what happened to all these creatures? Um, why are we the only ones left? Um, so for comparative anatomy, we're going to start looking at like features and skulls. So obviously this is the human Homo sapiens ones. Here's your Neanderthal, see that big brow. Here's Homo erectus, or actually it might be Homo habilis. Um, but you can look, look, right, they all look pretty darn similar. Yes, they're different, but pretty similar in structure, which means they've been making similar proteins. And if you remember, if you're making similar proteins, you've got to have similar DNA. Because uh, DNA, those genes are what code for a protein. So we actually share more DNA with these creatures than we do with a chimpanzee. It's just that chimpanzees are the our um, closest living relative. Our old extinct relatives would actually share more DNA with us. All right, but we're gonna just keep going with kind of other organisms. So you know, kind of looking at you know the diversity of life. Um, can we find similarities between all these creatures? What's similar? What's different? Right. So that's what anatomy is: the origin, and function of their bones and organs to make con comparison. Um, so like these three, right? We see some similarities. We see some differences. Um, but what I want to focus on these terms. All right, look at that. That wing right that's basically a hand right there and then here's a human hand and then here's a whale's flipper the whale's flipper actually has the same bones in it that we do in our hand and a bat does there they're just shaped differently and because they're shaped differently they have a different function right so we start to classify terms like this they have similar ancestors right they're all mammals the bones are all there they just might be in different shapes so similar ancestors similar origin but a different function, right? Because bats use it to fly, glide. We use our hands to grasp things, and the whales using their flippers to um, uh, swim. Um, so homologous. See that term homo again? Same, like homologous chromosomes, same information, similar ancestor. Um, so here's the definition for that. You can read it through and get it down in your notes. Uh, divergent evolution is kind of where one ancestor has split into two or more species. So there's probably been like, you know, a mammal ancestor that has spread out and now we have all these different types of mammals. Um, so again, if you look at these bones, right, these are all the same bones, radius and ulna, the humerus, the phalanges, these are the carpals, same thing in our hands, in a pig, in a bird's wings too. This is like, would be the thumb of the bird, which is weird to think about. Um, oh shoot, I used to know the name of that. It's like a, a ruler or something. I'll have to look that one up. Um, so if we keep going, um, the other flip side of this is, okay, there are creatures who have same structures, but from obviously different ancestors. So mammal, bird, insect, they all have wings, but these wings arose from different ancestors. Same function, but different ancestors. So that's the flip side of homologous is analogous. So, and there's your definition for it. Analogous structures kind of go hand in hand with this idea of convergent evolution. So things uh, looking more and more similar, right? Non-related species with same pressures will pop out like the same like body parts or plans. So we got a fish, we got a reptile, and we got a dolphin, right? So boom, mammal, reptile, fish. You know, the ocean 
there's really only one great body plan, right? This kind of long streamlined body plan and this powerful body to get you to move fast in it. So they're all coming from different things, but they popped out the same body plan. So this is a huge kind of bonus to natural selection. Oh, that pressure must be working somehow, right? Um, so here's a nice little slide. You know, if we look at this one parent species and it's separated into different species, this would be our A example of divergent evolution. So we kind of like that book series, divergent being different. Convergent is where they're going to get look more and more and more similar. Will they ever become the same species? No, like a dolphin's never going to become a reptile or a fish, but they will look more and more similar probably over time. And then here is what we see a lot in nature, right? Um, uh, parallel evolution so just kind of going side by side so we're living in the same habitat but you know we're not really getting affected by each other so think about um, I don't know, like humans and dogs right um, are we starting to look more and more like each other mm, maybe maybe some people right look like they're dogs but yeah overall no we're just kind of living in the same environment now you guys are actually going to um, watch a whole video on whales here, um, so I'm not going to get too much into this, but they are actually mammals, right? Because they breathe, um, they have mammary glands, um, but they used to actually be regular mammals that lived on land, right? They actually went back in the water, and so how we know this is because we found some evidence of their kind of past legs. So these kind of floating bones right here, um, these are what we call vestigial structures. They were useful in an ancestor, but now it's not longer helpful for the whale. What these are is actually old pelvic bones and kind of the remnants of maybe like femurs and like your thigh bone. Um, and so their ancestors just tells us, oh, they must have had these legs at one point, but they're kind of transitioned back into water. They've lost these legs because they don't really need them, right? That would have made them less streamlined to have little legs sticking out and getting in the way. Um, so again, vestigial structures. And humans have tons of these. Um, anybody can get your like ears to like wiggle sometimes, things like that. Um, um, so yeah, here I'm not going to get into all this because you're going to watch a video onto it. But yeah, these vestigial structures, um, body parts and species that are lost or passed on but have lost their original function. Um, it's not lost through uh, atrophy, basically not used. Whales didn't lose their legs just because they didn't use them. It's really random mutations they lost them. But let's say, okay, you randomly had a mutation and you're a whale and you like your hind legs got shorter. Well, then that means you had, you know, less resistance you were more streamlined so you were probably faster and you could like eat more than like the other whales that had these dangling legs so you passed on your traits because you were more successful um and then just over time the legs got shorter and so shorter again through random mutations not because of atrophy basically them not using them all right last little bit here vestigial structures in humans I kind of got ahead of myself um but yeah here's kind of the rest of them traits that were Useful with our ancestors, but not really for us. Um, the appendix is a big one right here. Our ancestors probably used to have a big one. It's basically just kind of this blind duct for like bacteria. Uh, our ancestors probably used it to help them digest like kind of raw meat and things like that. But now that we cook all of our food, not really necessary anymore. Um, we actually have a nictitated membrane, kind of like some like snakes and stuff. Um, we have the remnants of it. Our ancestors probably had it, and our, like our reptilian ancestors, because mammals actually came from reptiles. Um, so like the membrane that would go over the eye kind of sideways, which is really cool, that kind of clear one. Um, here's what I was talking about with ears. We actually have the remnants of ear muscles, where obviously we can like move our heads pretty easily. Um, but our ancestors may have needed more mobile ears. Think of like a rabbit would have had well-developed ear muscles to move it back and forth, but we don't need it. Um, wisdom teeth. You know, they were good to come in when we'd lost our teeth, but now that we take care of our teeth, don't really need these anymore. And then the tailbone, right? We do have the bones for a tail, just not necessary for Homo sapiens, right? And so that has kind of gone the way of the dodo. So we would call these vestigial structures. Once useful, not really useful anymore. Um, all right, I'm going to have to pause here because I'm running out onto my 15 minute time limits. And then I will pick this up in the part two lecture video. Um, so we'll start right back up. So head to Canvas and find the part two lecture video.